we can still have joy. For that, O oh God, we are grateful. We can have joy, O oh God, for you are truly the center of our joy. God, we ask now that you will speak to our hearts and our minds. Open up your word to us. Open up us to your word that we may know the wonderful truth of your word. We love you, Father. We praise you and we thank you. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Speak now, God. Amen. 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 Won't you turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 5. It is truly good to see each and every one of you on this Sunday morning. Welcome to all of our visitors and welcome to the Ford family. Those that are here and those that are there, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, amen, amen. Thank you to the Ford family choir for blessing us on this morning, amen. Amen, for they have truly blessed us and we are grateful for your coming and welcome to all of those who are watching service online. Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 20, but for the sake of conversation, we're just going to begin reading there at verse 14 of the text. Mark chapter 5, began reading there at verse 14. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city, in the country, and they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Verse 16 says, And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with Jesus to depart from their region. And when Jesus got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, verse 19 says, Jesus did not permit or allow him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. Verse 20 said that this demon-possessed man who was now a changed man, he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. As we wrestle with this text on this morning, let us think on the thought, when the mad man met the master. When the mad man met the master. <clears throat> when the mad man met the master. Verse 2 of our text says that when Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man who was possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. The message Bible calls him a madman. This madman pictures the horrors of a life 
out of control. This demon-possessed man is a man who lived on the margins of society. This madman who we find in our text on today was very much like any other man or woman that we may encounter in our day. You would recognize him the moment that you saw him. Something has happened in his life that has brought about a separation of his mind, body, and soul. Maybe he was a father who lost his job due to a failing economy. He could have been abused <clears throat> or molested as a child, and now the demons of his past have come back and tormented his soul. Maybe he's been informed of the fact that he has a terminal disease. Maybe he was a 40-ounce toting, pill-popping, marijuana-smoking, crack-dealing, street-hustling, gang-banging young brother that just got caught up in the system. Whatever his trauma was, thank you, Deacon, whatever his trauma was, life has become too much for him to handle on his own. He was possessed with demons out of his right mind. Verses 3 and 4 of the text introduces us to a man who is helpless, hopeless, homeless, and desperate. Demons controlled his mind and his body. He was uncontrollable for no one could tame him and no one could calm him down. Just as you cannot tame a wild animal, no one could tame this man. He is distant and detached. He is separated and isolated from proper and typical society. So much so that his address is in the local cemetery. His home is amongst the graveyard on the Galilean shoreline, tombs in the caves that have been cut out from the cliffs and the clefts. Apparently, he feels more secure living among the dead than he does living among the living. The citizens of the Gentile territory tried to control this man with chains and shackles, but they could not tame him with the chains or the shackles. No one could bind him. No human agency could tame him because these were worldly methods trying to tame a spiritual being. Verse 5 of the text says that day and night you could hear this man walking in this cemetery. Day and night he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills. He was howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. This man's personality had been so destroyed by the demons that he was now insane. This is a profoundly and pitiful picture of a devil controlled life. He is depressed. He is in despair. He is decadent and demoralized. His body was out of control because his mind was out of control. This man had internal turmoil that expressed itself externally. Oh, let me suggest to you on this morning, Shiloh, that we cannot always look for things to be right on the outside if things are not right on the inside. He was abandoned and he was burdened. He was bruised and he was hostile. His life was a mess. But praise be unto God that one day the master showed up. At the end of Mark chapter 4, Jesus had calmed one storm on the outside, and he now and his disciples, they are crossing over in Mark chapter 5 to deal with the storm that was inside. Does anyone here know what it's like to have an internal turmoil? How many times should you be insane because of what you have been through? Yet what you have
have been through made you stronger and wiser. What you went through made you better and not bitter. There are some people here today who understands what it's like to have an internal turmoil. People who clearly understands DMS when he says, y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here up in here. Y'all gonna make me lose my cool up in here, up in here. Y'all gonna make me at up in here, up in here. Internal turmoil that is expressed externally. Some hurting people dwell in abandoned buildings, vehicles, or even some other places. And some people live in their own homes, but they are emotionally alone. Invisible chains shackle their hearts and their minds to the point that they distance themselves from other people. Internal storms. Day and night their minds are plundered. They are emotionally emasculated and mentally they are messed up. And they say, I need help and I need it right now. Verse 6 of the text says that when Jesus was still some far away from the man, that this man saw him, he ran to meet him, and he bowed low before Jesus. There was still hope for this man, even in the condition that he was in. Look at this now. This man is possessed by a large number of demons who controlled him and subjected him to intense uh, oppression. They tormented him as one combined force. Although there were no chains that was controlling him on the outside, he was forcibly controlled on the inside. But yet when this mad man sees Jesus getting off of the boat, if you will, his composure changed. Although the man was full of demons, Jesus' presence made the difference. Although this man was demon-possessed, he recognized that Jesus is the Son of of the most high God. And the demons recognize Jesus who has all power over everybody and every demon. So the Bible says that his composure change and he falls at Jesus' feet. Uh, verse 7 of the text says that while he is kneeling at Jesus' feet, the unclean spirit said to Jesus, Jesus, what business do we have here on today? I beg you, do not torment me. The demons inside of this man trembled at the very presence of Jesus. The demons knew that now that Jesus was on the scene, that things were about to change. Now that Jesus is on the scene, things were not going to stay the same. Why? Because Jesus' presence makes all the difference in the world. I just believe that there is somebody here on today who may be like the man in the text who is wrestling with an internal storm, but you found out that the presence of Jesus makes life all the worth living. Do I have a witness that the only reason that you are not unstable as you could be is because Jesus makes the difference. The only reason you are spiritually stable, emotionally stable, is because Jesus makes the difference. This madman teaches us on today that when Jesus comes on the scene of your life, your life will change. 
uh, verse 13 of the text says that the demons came out of the man and entered a large herd of pigs that were feeding on the mountains. This verse goes on to say that when the demons entered the pits, the pits ran off the side of the mountain and they drowned in the sea. The destruction of the pits dramatically demonstrates the power that Jesus has over the demonic. See, see what people could not do? Jesus did it. What sociology, psychology, and philosophy could not do, Jesus did it. How many of you know that Jesus can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, and to whom he wants to do it to? Uh, although that is the story of the text, although that is the miracle of the text, we cannot stop right there at the miracle. Because see, the main point of the story, the main teaching point of this text comes after the miracle. It is what happened after the miracle took place. See, when Jesus showed up on the scene that day, this madman's life was completely transformed. This text teaches us on today that that Jesus wants to and Jesus can change your life. When, and when Jesus changes us, each of us have a story to tell. Ah, uh, the first point of our text there in verses 14 and 15 of the text is that only Jesus can transform your life. Uh, look at verses 14 and 15 of the text. See, in verses 3, 4, and 5, we see a madman who is out of his mind. But now that we get down to verse 15 of the text, we see a changed man who is sitting there, clothed, and in his right mind. Verse 14 says that the report was so unbelievable that many people went to investigate the incident for themselves. And what they found out when they showed up was that this demon-possessed man was sitting there clothed and in his right mind. He was sitting there rational and self-controlled. So complete was the transformation that verse 15 says that the townspeople who knew the man before he met Jesus were now completely afraid. They were now in awe at the transformation that had taken place. See, when he was out of his mind, they were not afraid. But now that he is in his right mind, they were afraid. Help me, God. Help me, God. This teaches us on today that only Jesus can transform your life. Jesus can be trusted with our pain and with our shame and transform us to be a new creature. Where the Bible says that all things will pass away and all things will become new. Oh, y'all, look at this now. In verses 3, 4, and 5 of the text, the man was cutting himself, is what the text says. He was cutting himself with sharp stones. But now in verse 15 of the text, this changed man was sitting there clothed. The man was cutting himself before, so he had physical scars and physical evidence of where he used to live and what he used to do and who he used to be. He had the physical evidence of just how insane he used to be. But since he met Jesus, Jesus sat him down and covered him up so no one could see just how insane he was. Oh, Shiloh, that is good news on this Sunday morning that God still covers us so no one can see just how jacked up 
we used to be. God covers us so that nobody can see the scars of our past or the scars of our present. God covers us because the Bible says there is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. God covers us to make it just as if we have never sinned. God covers us so that we don't look like what we've been through. Our past can haunt us, but God covers us. What people say about us cannot hurt us because God has us covered. Aren't you glad that God covers us? In verses 3, 4, and 5, it does something to me, y'all. I don't know your story, but I know my story. And I thank God he has me covered. Uh, in verses 3, 4, and 5 of the text, this mad man was out of his mind screaming in the graveyard. But now in verse 15 of the text, the Bible says that he is sitting there in his right mind. The man didn't understand it. He didn't know what had happened, but he knew he was sitting there in his right mind. He went from being spiritually and mentally lost to being found. He went from being spiritually and mentally blind to now seeing. He went from being C-H-A-I-N-E-D to C-H-A-N-G-E-D. He went from being chained to being changed because he met the madman, met the master. He was in his right mind. The man who was once out of control was now in control. This man was completely transformed as a butterfly doesn't look like a caterpillar. So the man in verse 15 of the text doesn't look like the man in verse 2 of the text. Does anybody got that testimony on today? That since I met Jesus, my verse 15 doesn't look like my verse 2. Who I am today is not who I used to be. I may look like the same person, but I got a new walk. I got a new talk. I got a new name and glory because I am a new person. I'm not saying I have it all together, but I am not who, I am not what I used to be. Anybody got that testimony? If the truth be told, before we met Jesus, our lives were spinning out of control. Some of us were doing some things that did not make sense. And as we think back on those things now, we knew we had to be out of our mind because those things most definitely did not make sense. If we were to look back over our lives, we would have to admit that we didn't always use the right words. We didn't always do the right things. And we didn't always act the right way. But just like the man in our text, our testimony is it is only by the grace of God that we are sitting here clothed and in our right mind. Who has that testimony that when you really think about who you used to be and what you used to do, you should be either two places, either dead or in jail. But when you look back over your life, you know that it is only because of the grace of God that met you where you were that you are now sitting, clothed, and in your right hand, right mind. Can I get a witness that if it wasn't for Jesus? 
I don't know your story, but I know my story. And if it had not been for Jesus meeting me in my mess, oh, is there anybody here that can say with me, Jesus has done a wonderful change in our lives? Only Jesus can transform our lives, right? Only Jesus can transform our lives. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12. But not only can only Jesus transform our lives, but the reality is, y'all, not everybody, point number two, not everybody will be happy when he changes our lives. Look at verses 16 and 17 of the text. One writer uses the word anti-evangelism. See, the herdsmen and the disciples rehearsed the, in the ears of others how Jesus had completely changed this man. They rehearsed how the demons went into the pits and the pits ran off the cliff of the mountain. The, but the listeners who heard this message, they did not repent. But instead, they started begging Jesus to leave town. The healing of this madman caused adverse side effects. The villagers were not pleased when they witnessed the new condition of the madman. The townspeople saw the effects of Jesus on this man and their money, so they told Jesus to leave town. The townspeople began to beg Jesus to leave their region because he had already caused an economic loss. Instead of thanking Jesus, they told Jesus to get out of town. The people were so insulted by Jesus that they drove him away. The people's concern was on money and not the miracle. They did not want to lose any more money, so they begged Jesus to leave town. Oh, this teaches us on today, Shiloh, that not everybody is going to be happy when Jesus transforms your life. When Jesus changes your direction, when Jesus have you walking in a new direction, not everybody will be happy about it. When you surrender your life to Jesus, everybody is not going to be happy with that decision. When Jesus changes your appetite, when Jesus evolves you, not everybody is going to be happy about it. As the Lord changes you, there will be be some people who will throw shade on you. As you are growing and going in God, there will be some who will throw shade on you. Do I have a witness that have experienced this, that since you made the decision to walk with Jesus, you've lost some friends along the way? There are some people who would prefer to have the old Karen rather than the change Karen. There are some people who would prefer to have the old person rather than the new person in God. I say it again. That's why we must be careful, Shiloh, of who we roll with. We must make sure that we have the right people in our clique, our club and our crew. In Acts chapter 16, when Paul and Silas cast the demon out of the young girl, they messed up her pimp's prophet, so they put Paul and Silas in jail. Now in verse 17 of the text, now that Jesus has cast a demon out of this mad man and messed up their stream of income, they said, Jesus, you got to go. But see, what the people failed to realize was that the restoration of the madman and the destruction of the demons were more important than the pits. 
because see how many of you know that on any day of the week a miracle is better than money because see it is a miracle that we are in our right mind after everything we have seen this year it is a miracle that our lights are still on the water is still running and we still have a roof over our head it is a miracle that we got up this morning with the activity of our limbs with our organs functioning it is a miracle that we are still alive because we have come through many dangers toils and snares is there anybody here that will say with me i need a miracle more than money because if I get the miracle I can get the money God keeps on doing great things for us God keeps on making a way for us God keeps on moving in and through our lives God is a miracle working God God is a wonder working God and every now and then you just have to throw your head back and say thank you God for the great things that you do every now and then you gotta throw your head back and say thank you God for the ways that you made I didn't see it coming I don't know how it happened but thank you God not only will Jesus transform your life not only will everyone not be happy about the new you that comes forth but the last point and we're going to go and sit under a table is that we have a story to tell oh y'all look at verse 18 of the text Verse 18 says that Jesus was getting into the boat. Look at this now. Oh, you got to see this. And your sanctified mind. They were telling Jesus, Jesus, you're messing up things in our town. It is time for you to go. So the Bible says that Jesus gets into the boat. Oh, and you got to see him. I can imagine. That as Jesus is getting into the boat, this mad man is following after Jesus. This mad man, now look at this now. In the beginning, he begged for mercy, but now he is begging to go with Jesus. In the beginning, he begged for Jesus to leave him alone, but now that he has met the master, he says, don't leave me alone. In the beginning, he approached Jesus the moment he stepped out of the boat. But now as Jesus is getting back into the boat, this mad man, this changed man, approached to go with Jesus. And verse 19 and 20 says that Jesus told him, no man. No, sir, you cannot come with me. I need you to stay right here. I need you to stay in your town because you will have more of an impact among those who know that you used to live in the cemetery. You will have more of an impact for those who know that you used to be chained. You would have more of an impact among those who know that you used to cut yourself and you used to howl. So I need you to stay right here and be a voice for me in this city. I need you to stay right here because I've changed your mess and I have given you a message. Nothing is too hard for God. God can take your mess and give you a message. God can take your messy past and give you a message of love and a message of hope. Is there anybody here who got that testimony? He took my mess and he gave me a message. I can imagine that this mad man began to walk around the town and he says, I am the one who was lost 
but now I'm found. I am the one who was blind, but now I see. I am the one who was mad, but now I got joy. I am the one who was out of my mind, but now I am in my right mind. Oh, the good news on today, Shiloh, is that when you, uh, when Jesus transforms your life, Jesus turns your mess into a message, and we now have a story to tell, and we now got to tell our story. I don't know what your story is, but I know my story, but everybody in this house, we got a story to tell. Tell them I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was mad, but now I got joy, unspeakable joy. Tell them I was down, but he lifted me. I was sick, but he healed me. I was confused. But he has given me a peace of mind. Is there anybody here that got a story to tell? Tell them Jesus has changed my life. He brought me out of drug addiction. He brought me out of alcoholism. He brought me out of depression. He brought me out of suicide. He brought me. I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but today I'm a survivor. Is there anybody here? Other than the madman that got a story to tell. Tell them I tried money, but it didn't work. I tried folk, but they didn't work. I tried success, but it didn't work. I tried pleasures, but it didn't work. But all oh, when I trusted Jesus. Oh, when I trusted Jesus, he made a change. In my life, when I trusted Jesus, he made me a new person. He made me a changed person. He made me a different person. Is there anybody here that got a story to tell? Tell them that amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that broke my liberty. I don't know why he comes to love me so, but he looked beyond. He looked beyond all of my faults, and he saw my needs. Therefore, I shall forever lift my eyes. Because of the change he made in my life, I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view that cross. Of how he died for me, how marvelous is that grace that caught my fallen soul. He looked beyond all of my faults, all of my failures, all of my flaws. Is there anybody who got that testimony? He looked beyond. And he gave you what you need. Tell your story, y'all. Tell your story. Tell your story. Tell your story. There is power and you telling your story. The doors of God's great church are open. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Father. The doors of God's great church are open. If you find yourself like this mad man, this man, because of what was going on inside of him, had been pushed to the margins of society. And the truth of the matter is, had Jesus not come to town, this madman would have remained in his sins. But I praise God that a stranger was in town. I offer that stranger to you on today. I don't know what internal turmoil you are wrestling with. I don't know what internal storm you are battling on today, but I offer you Jesus. I offer you the one who says, if you come to me, I will walk with you through your storm. I offer Jesus to you on today. A man who loves you, who died for you, the hymn writer is right. He truly looks beyond who we were, who we are. And Jesus meet us 